just thinking about like joining the mob because we've all felt that pull to not be attacked and therefore join the mob. And really to me, it's like another form of Mm self-abandonment. It's like joining the mob, self, you stay here. Mm -hmm. You're not welcome here. You can't question, you can't express yourself, but it also feels so safe. So this like primal reaction is happening when, when either someone is called out or a group of people are called out and it's, it literally feels like we're in danger. I say we, I just mean that group. And, and so what do you do? What do you do to, especially online, a lot of people have their livelihood based online. So they're like, how do I protect myself, my livelihood, maybe mm-hmm. my family? And then it's like, I have no other choice but to either join the mob, say, I'm so sorry, and disappear ultimately for some people. And it's just, it feels incredibly unproductive. And like, where is the human to human conversation? Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 you know, we've experienced some things over the last year that it just feels like a conversation can't be had. And I've been so, like, we've been so frustrated. Like, why? Why mm-hmm. the fuck can't we have a conversation where you can show up as you, I can show up as me, and we can witness one another? and hold space for one another and see what's here rather than completely shut down anything. Yeah, just kind of um, just nicks any experience that the other person has had, whether we agree with it or not. Um, So thank you for sharing that story. I just feel like that's so profound. And I think a lot of people, yeah, really knowingly or unknowingly find themselves in echo chambers and feel very Mm -hmm. comforted by it, secure, confident. And um, it can be really, really dangerous. What did you find in your research um, when when you were researching echo chambers and self-righteousness and mob mentality that really helped you to um, speak on what you speak on now? Yeah. So one of the first things that I really started looking into, we not even intentionally, but I realized that there was something there about compassion And it was a reminder of my sobriety, actually, uh, early sobriety. And maybe both of you have experienced this, where now all of a sudden in clarity, I had to sit with everything that I have done in the past 10 years. I have to sit with the cheating. I have to sit with the lying, with the manipulation. I have to sit with just all of those moments that are very messy, very complex, very awkward, very degrading, you know, I, I had to sit with them. I couldn't drink it away. I couldn't smoke it away. I couldn't sex it away. I couldn't do any of that. And it was, it would have been very easy for me, which I had done many times before, to start shaming myself for what had happened. Right. But the only way I could move on from that was to show myself compassion, was to really understand that even though everything that I was internalizing and repressing had manifested itself in such aggressive ways, I was protecting myself in the best way I knew how. And this is really important, right? Because the core of everything that I work on and study and research and help people with is self-sabotage, different elements of self-sabotage. How do we sabotage ourselves on an individual level and on a collective level? And everything we've just been talking about, mob mentality, what you see online, what some people refer to as cancel culture, that's something that I call collective sabotage or collective Mm. self-sabotage, if you will. And I realized in early sobriety, in the same way that I did after this incident in 2020 was that I had to show myself compassion and to understand that I was protecting myself in the best way I knew how, right? So with that specific incident, one of the first things I realized, just like you you just mentioned as well, it's about the fight or flight. That's what happens. You get into how do I protect myself mode, right? Because my thinking at the time would have been, and I'm sure a lot of people will resonate with this, just the details will be different, but you might have experienced this. So 
that interaction could have stayed in the DMs, right? When that person had sent me a message about this, it could, it could have and it should have stayed there. That's the most humane thing to do. Show this man his humanity in the same way that he is showing me my humanity, right? But the way of thinking was, again, that fight or flight. If I have a healthy conversation with this person, am I defending this behavior and therefore betraying the mob? or the community. So what I need to do is to not even see this person as a human being and to just present them to everyone else so that I can feel like I still belong with my community. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that has been the biggest pattern that I've seen in every, everything, whether it's a client, you know, reaching out to me and, you know, they've experienced public shaming in one way or another, and they're trying to kind of pick up the pieces, which is what many people experienced last year. It's that fight or flight. So for anyone that is listening to this, that has been part of a mob in some kind of way, or or been part of a public shaming or a call out, or they've just reacted instead of responding, instead of actually doing the research, or they've been told that someone is quote unquote problematic and they've just cut the cord without actually finding out the truth of what happened, really show yourself compassion because we react in those ways a lot of the time because we're we're in fight or flight mode. We're trying to protect ourselves because if we make ourselves believe that if we side with that person, then we're going to be mobbed by proximity, right? That's just, that's just what a lot of people will think. So they'll cut off their friends, they'll cut off their family, their partners, their colleagues. Most of the time, not because of ill intent, but it's that fear of, of if I stick with this person, even when I know their heart, something is going to happen to me. So that has been the most interesting thing out of all of it, that fight or flight, which is just a very, again, it's that primal, it's that ancient thing within all of us, no matter how much technology advances, that will never go away. And it just manifests in different ways. And online, especially, we're seeing it more than ever. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.